everybody, I'm Erica, and welcome to my Steam Lab! I've got something extra special to show you today, and I have faith that it will be my coolest discovery yet! Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And what I can see is this awesome telescope! Ooh. Everything! Wow. I am super excited for what we'll be able to see through this telescope. Stars, planets, galaxies, satellites, space exploring cats. Well, maybe not the cats. There's a skylight in the lab. So I can see all the cool stuff from right here. I just have to finish focusing the telescope. Okay, while I focus on the telescope, why don't you guys focus on the awesome Bible story today? <laughs> it's out of this world. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 3 to 5. John squinted against the blinding glare of the afternoon sun. Just a short distance away, frothy waves crashed against craggy rocks and foamed over white sands. This island of Patmos was isolated and rocky, but the view was stunning, surrounded by brilliant blue sea and sky. Most beautiful prison on Earth. Though he wasn't chained up, John was in jail. The Roman emperor who was unable to make John stop preaching about Jesus had exiled him to this prison colony where many prisoners worked in the mines. There was no way off the island. So John was now very old, living out his final years on the island of Patmos with a handful of criminals. I can share the story of Jesus with them too. John settled into a shallow cave on shore to take shelter from the heat. He closed his eyes. I've seen so much. John had lived longer than any of the other of Jesus' disciples. He had watched the early church grow while the story of Jesus spread fast and bright as wildfire. But he had also seen terrible things happen to those who believed in Jesus. In fact, many people died just for talking about Jesus. We saw everything Jesus did. We can believe he'll be with us forever, even through death. Despite the threats and persecution, more people than ever were following Jesus. God's story was traveling from one end of the world to the other, just like Jesus said it would. I wonder why I've been allowed to live this long. In the cool of the shallow cave, John began to relax. His head was nodding. Until a voice like a trumpet sounded behind him. Write on a scroll what you see. John blinked. Was he awake or dreaming? Wait, what? I don't see. Oh. Turning, John saw Jesus himself, his eyes blazing with intensity. Do not be afraid. I was dead. But look, I am alive forever and ever. Write about what is happening now and what will happen later. John's mind worked quickly, trying to grasp what was happening. It appeared that God was trying to show him a picture of things that would happen in the future, and he wanted John to write them down and show them to others so that they could believe too. Yes, Lord. Do you mind if I grab a scroll? Oh, and a quill. I don't want to forget anything. John watched, amazed, as God showed him many things that were coming. Some were wonderful, some were terrible, some were mysterious. After the vision ended, John began a letter to several of the new churches. I, John, am writing this. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' royal family, 
We can put up with anything that happens to us. John explained every strange and amazing thing he had seen. Some of it made him tremble. Others wouldn't make sense until the right time had come. But the last part of his vision. That's the very best part. I can't wait to write all about it. God had shown John how the whole story will turn out for everyone who believes in Jesus. Carefully, he recalled all the incredible things he'd seen. How am I going to do this? I mean, there's no way that words can capture it. But I have to try. It's just a picture until they get to see for themselves how real and breathtaking it will be. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. John remembered the words that Jesus had spoken while he was on earth, right before his death and return to life. There are many rooms in my father's house. I am going there to prepare a place for you. If I go and do that, I will come back and I will take you to be with me. Then you will also be where I am. That's what I saw. It's the special place Jesus is making for each one of us. A place where we will never be apart from God. John recalled the next scene from his vision. He saw a great white throne. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, now God makes his home with people. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. John paused as he stared in wonder at what he had just written down. All of these terrible things we've seen, people sick and hurt, being mocked and put in jail, all of it will be made right. Something else stood out to John. Light. There was so much light. The city does not need the sun or moon to shine on it. God's glory is its light. And the Lamb, Jesus, is its lamp. Its gates will never be shut because there will be no night there. The place John had seen wasn't just filled with light. It was beautiful too. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life. It was as clear as crystal. It flowed from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Its fruit was ripe every month. The leaves of the tree bring healing to the nations. Once again, John lifted his pen from the page. It just seemed impossible to share the real glory of what he had seen with tiny black marks on a scroll. He tried again. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. John felt himself grinning. He could say one thing for sure, no one would be bored. He and every other person who believes in God would finally be able to live out what they were created to do, fully and completely with no sin or frustration or weariness to get in the way. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people, amen. Now, John didn't know exactly when the things God had shown him would take place, and neither do we. But from what we've seen and heard, we know one thing for certain. In the end, God will make everything right for those who trust in him. Whoa! Would you look at that? That doesn't look like cheese at all! <laughs> I love getting a glimpse at things I'm not used to seeing every day. Like, Today's story, we got a little glimpse of what the future could be like. When Jesus was on earth, he said if anyone puts their faith in him, they'll have a relationship with God that will last forever. That means we can be a part of God's big story, a story that never ends. Now, I don't know what you imagine when you think about heaven. Maybe it's clouds and harps and angels flying around. Maybe what you imagine is exactly right. Though there's a lot about the future we don't understand, it's exciting to think about the things we do know. When we believe in Jesus, we can look forward to a time when there will be no more pain, no more sadness, everything will be made new. We will be fully alive with God in a way we can't even imagine. That's the one thing to remember today. Following Jesus will turn out greater than you can imagine. Having a glimpse at the future can give us hope here in the present, 
when we're worried about something or someone, or when we're sad or in pain, we know the bad things won't last forever. God has a future plan for us that we can truly focus on. Speaking of, let's see what this thing is focused on now. <gasps> I don't believe it! Space cats! Oh. <laughs> gotcha! Thanks for hanging with me in the lab and keep focusing on the important stuff. See you later. God and Science Minute with me, Gordo. I know what you're thinking. What do God and science have to do with each other? Like I keep saying, everything. Did you know God created everything? Everything was created by God and for Him. 
God created you. God created me. God created our minds. God and science go together, like bologna and cheese, like bedtime and nightlights, like diving boards and swimming pools. Shane. Hey, Gordo. Is there an underground tunnel that's coming up into here? Uh, I don't know. But if there isn't one right now, we should make one. I need to buy a watchdog. Oh, oh, you mean like a lab a door retriever? <laughs> That's actually very witty. Very good, Shane. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, I have a big experiment today. What? Did you hear that? Oh, the phone's ringing. Just wait right here. There's a lot going on. I'll be back. Gordo left me in his laboratory. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always wanted to do that. <gasps> oh, Gordo's lab notes and his experiment. I'm thinking we're going to do his experiment. I don't know where he went, but I want to try this out. Come on, let's try this. Let's take a look at Gordo's lab notes. Hmm. Okay. Whoa, cool. This looks like an amazing experiment. Let's try this out. This is you and me. It's how God made us to be. Clean, clear, pure, made in his image. This is sin. Now sin destroys us. It changes us. Let's see. Whoa, it really did change us. Now it's this mucky color. Hmm, sin is kind of like when I lie to my mom or dad, when I cheat on a test, or when I steal two bucks from my brother. Hmm, but God had a plan. God sent us a rescuer, his son, Jesus. Now sin doesn't have any power over Jesus. Now, Jesus' power is what changes everything. Look, you are still full of sin. You need to accept Jesus into your heart and have faith that he can change you. Faith is being sure of what we hope for because we know and trust in Jesus. Let's take Jesus and pour him into you and see what happens. Oh, it became clear again. Wow, Jesus is in you and he's working inside you. Wow, Jesus does really change us from the inside. Oh, I think it's time for Andy to come back home from summer camp. We can't wait to tell him about Jesus. Okay, bye guys. It's six in the morning and time to get up. This is Peng. He lives in a Christian orphanage with about 40 other kids. Peng lives here because his mom couldn't take care of him alone. But his friends are becoming like his new family. That makes him very happy. Peng's gonna show you what it's like where they live. This morning, they're having rice, eggs, and noodles for breakfast. After breakfast, it's time to wash the dishes. 
Everyone helps with chores, so they go a lot faster. After chores are done, it's time to get dressed for school. Peng wears a school uniform. Before he leaves, Peng always makes his bed. Outside, he puts his shoes on. Shoes are never allowed inside. Everyone piles into a truck to get to school. Peng shares a sweet treat with all his friends in the truck. When everyone gets to school, they play games and hang out with friends. They even have a school dog. Everyone really cares about their school and keeps it clean. Now it's time for the morning pledge. An exercise. This is Peng's classroom. They learn a lot of the same things you do, like English and math. It's lunchtime, so everyone goes to the cafeteria. Today, they're having curry and sticky rice. Peng eats quickly so he can go out and play. Thai kids play all kinds of games like volleyball, ping pong, and tak ra. After recess, it's time for everyone to brush their teeth. Peng is in charge of getting the water for his class. Now it's time to head back to the classroom. We'd better let Peng and his friends get some studying done. See you later, Peng! After school is over, it's back to the truck to go home. He changes out of his school uniform to his favorite shirt and starts his chores. He helps out by cleaning the bathroom and washing clothes. Everyone has to wash their own clothes. Now it's playtime. <laughs> Peng likes to explore walking through the rice paddies. Peng doesn't have very many toys to play with. He keeps his toys safe in this little bag. Peng has a really special Thai Bible that he loves to read. Peng is a good reader and he loves to learn about our great God. Thanks for spending the day with us. <laughs>